You've probably heard me say before, don't repeat next year what you did this year. But you know what? In so many cases, people will repeat the same steps year after year and then wonder, why isn't anything changing in my life? Well, I want to invite you to the next conference. This is a success conference to teach you how to do things differently so that you have better results at the end of the year. You know, so many women tell me, Terry, I wish my husband could hear what you're sharing about success principles. Well, the Lord put on my heart to start this event called the Next Conference for Women and Men. Now, this is all about going to the next level of success. Whatever level you're at, God has so much more for you. So I want to invite you to join me and my special guest, Dr. Dean Radke. This man was an executive at Avon, The Gap, The Limited, and he has taught me a wealth of information that has brought success in my life. So I know you are going to learn so much that will take you to the next level. So take advantage of early bird registration at the website, terry.com. Now, I want to just talk to you real quick about staying motivated to go after your dreams. You know, you've probably heard people say before, the worst day in heaven would be when God shows you a glimpse of all that you could have had, all that you could have done, and all that you could have been. But you gave up, or you put limitations on yourself, or limitations on God. Well, I want you to do everything that God has called you to do, but it's going to require some strategic steps. You know, I was thinking about how so many times we have temptations in our lives. Temptations, you know, for whatever. And people talk about the different temptations we face. Whether it's drugs, it's alcohol, it's adultery, it's cheating, it's whatever. People talk about all these temptations. But I just heard Joyce Meyer share a message on one of the biggest temptations that we are faced with is the temptation to quit. The temptation to just give up, to throw in the towel, to say it's not worth it, nothing's changing, I'm still where I was before, I just want to quit. And you know, we've all been there. We all have that temptation and even that tendency to say, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? It's not working. Well, I want you to stay motivated. Do not give Satan the thrill or the satisfaction of seeing you quit. In fact, on Instagram the other day, somebody asked me, Terry, do you have any teachings on how to stay motivated? You know, it's easy to get inspired. You can go to a conference, get inspired, get motivated. But then when you go back home and you get back into your day-to-day -day routine, that's when you have to stay motivated. You have to. And you know, you can't always have someone come into your house cheering you up. But you have to take strategic steps to stay motivated. So I'm going to share with you a few things, a few steps that I've applied in my life to keep myself motivated when I feel like just quitting. Number one is be clear on what you want. Be clear on what you want. You know, so many times the reason goals go unfulfilled is because we're unclear. We have unclear goals and priorities for our life. You know, it's been said that weak desires bring weak results. Well, when you're unclear about what you really want, then you're less likely to achieve that goal. So whether it's a goal to lose weight, a goal to save money or to get out of debt, to start a business, to finish a certain level of school, be clear on what you really want. How much weight do you want to lose? What do you want to weigh? How much money do you want to save by the end of, say, December 2014? Be very clear about what you want. Be very specific about it. Number two, you've heard me say this in probably every podcast. Number two is write it down. You probably know by now and you can recite it that your chance of success increases by 98% just by the fact that you write your dreams and goals. You know, every successful person that I study and the ones I know have written dreams and goals. In fact, I was reading in Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, he talked about how Andrew Carnegie hired him in the early 1900s, hired him to go out and interview 500 of the world's wealthiest people at that time. Every one of them were millionaires, 500 millionaires. And he said, Napoleon, I want you to find out, do they have anything in common? Is there one success trait or some principle that they all happen to apply? And he said, if you find one thing in common, come back and tell me. Napoleon Hill went out and he interviewed some of the most well-known people, Alexander Graham Bell, Thomas Edison, John D. Rockefeller, Henry Ford, Theodore Roosevelt, Charles Schwab. He came back and he said they do. They have something in common. 
Every one of them have clearly defined written goals. Clearly defined written goals. So define what that means for you. Number three is keep it before your eyes. You've heard me say this before. But you know, it's amazing how out of sight is out of mind. And when you're not looking at your dreams and goals, it causes your desire for it to just decrease. Keeping it before your eyes causes your desire to increase. It elevates us, that desire. You know, that's why we have the Dreams and Goals books. That's why we now have the Dreams and Goals app for your iPad, for your iPhone. It's looking for ways to keep you focused on your dreams and goals. I mean, you can be sitting at a red light and all of a sudden look at your dreams and goals. Keep it before your eyes. At lunch, before you walk out the door, you've got to constantly keep that dream before your eyes. You know, I recently heard a story about this guy who, at Thanksgiving, he said on Thanksgiving, he would always climb up in the attic, get out the Christmas boxes, and start decorating the tree. After Christmas, he'd pack up all the ornaments, put them in the box, put them back in the attic. But before he packed everything away, he would get out a sheet of paper and he would write his dreams and goals for the new year. Now think about it. He's already ahead of what, 98, 97% of the rest of America just by the fact that he wrote his dreams and goals. But do you think he accomplished them? Not at all. You know why? They weren't before his eyes. You have to keep your dreams and goals in front of you to stay motivated to go after them. Number four is I want you to think of the alternative. What if you don't pursue this dream that's in your heart? What if you give up right now? I want you to think about 12 months from now, how will you feel? I mean, be honest with yourself. They say the biggest push to change is being faced with reality. This is reality. It's 12 months from now and you did not pursue that dream. How does that make you feel? You know, I ran into a lady recently who she, you know, listened to some of our podcasts, bought the Imagine Big kit, started writing her dreams, and she's married, has three kids, been married for a while, and she said, I've always wanted to, you know, be a hairstylist, but I gave up on that dream because I started having a family, and then I thought, my focus is on my kids, I'm not going to do hair, I'm just going to be a stay-at-home mom, and there's nothing wrong with that. But she said, inside, I always felt like there's something missing, I'm supposed to be doing something. Well, I have seen this lady probably every six months, maybe a year, and I love getting reports from her because time's going by and she's like, I'm almost finished with cosmetology school. I've only got three more months. Think about if a year from a year ago, what if a year ago she had given up? Think of how happy she's going to be fulfilling her dream. And she always says, you know, Terry, one of my excuses was I'm going to wait till the kids are grown and gone. She said, I can still style hair while they're at school. I want you to think of the alternative, but also my last point, number five, is think of the possibilities if you don't quit. I want you to know God always rewards obedience. Whatever God has put in your heart to do, do it. Don't allow Satan, don't allow your own thoughts to talk you out of it. Don't allow other people to talk you out of it based on your past experiences. You do what you need to do to keep that dream before your eyes. Stay focused on it and stay motivated. Remember, the secret of your future is in your daily routine. So do something every day to keep your dream alive. And also, if you're enjoying the podcast, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Join us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I love to keep you motivated. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.